Hello everyone, this is Dr. Shweta Anand and welcome back to my channel Simplified Dentistry. In today's video, let's discuss about non-keratinized epithelium of oral mucosa. I have already made a video on keratinized epithelium of oral mucosa. So first you can watch that video in order to have a better understanding of the topic. So as I have already mentioned that the keratinized epithelium contains four layers and they are stratum basal that is the basal layer, stratum spinosum that is pinus layer, stratum granulosum that is the granular cell layer and stratum corneum that is the corneal layer. Whereas the stratification in non-keratinized epithelium is less distinct. There are only three layers in the non-keratinized epithelium and these layers are referred to as stratum basal that is the basal layer, stratum intermedium that is the intermediate layer and stratum superficial that is the superficial layer. So the basal cells of both types are similar. A single layer of cuboidal cells is evident in both keratinized as well as non-keratinized epithelium. Whereas the cells of stratum intermedium are larger than the cells of the stratum spinosum. The intercellular space is also not obvious or enlarged and hence the cells of the stratum intermedium do not have a prickly appearance. These cells do contain some intermediate keratin filaments but biochemically they differ from those present in keratinizing epithelia and are sparsely distributed within the cells. The cells of the stratum intermedium are attached by desmosomes and their cell surfaces are more closely applied to each other than that of the spinous cells. So this is the reason why the intercellular space is not so enlarged in the intermediate layer. Another difference is that in non-keratinized epithelium, there is no stratum granulosum nor there is stratum corneum. Although sometimes incomplete or vestigial granules of stratum granulosum may form. So the topmost layer in non-keratinized epithelium is stratum superficial and it contains nucleated cells. They contain less number of tonofilaments and also lack keratohyaline granules. The cells of the stratum superficial also desquamate as the cornified squama. So in general, non-keratinizing oral mucosa have higher rates of mitosis than that of the keratinizing oral mucosa. So this was all about the non-keratinized epithelium. But sometimes the tissues that are not keratinized at one stage of development may keratinize at the another stage. Similarly, tissues may be modulated from keratinized or parakeratinized stage and also from their non-keratinized variants in their pathologic states. So although the terms keratinized and parakeratinized may be used interchangeably with the terms parakeratosis and keratosis, the terms keratinized and parakeratinized refer to physiologic stage and the terms parakeratosis and keratosis refers to pathologic stage. So now let's understand what is keratosis and parakeratosis. So when keratinization occurs in a normally non-keratinized tissue, it is referred to as keratosis. And when normally keratinizing tissue such as epidermis becomes parakeratinized, it is referred to as parakeratosis. So we can say that Parakeratosis is a mode of keratinization characterized by the retention of nuclei in stratum corneum. So that was all about non-keratinizing epithelium of oral mucosa. Thank you for watching the video and if you want more such contents related to dentistry then please subscribe to my channel Simplified Dentistry.